to me, strategy is very important. And Mexico right now has a precedent that study in Stanford, I, I believe, for uh, sustainability. And she wants to push more renewables. So now we're looking for solar production plus energy storage in different programs. You know, they have a centralized energy product uh, utility in Mexico because it's 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 a uh, it, it's a uh, uh, state or country owned. Yeah. Uh, and so um, they 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 are pushing renewables, and we see maybe like a seven eight gigawatt market, and uh, maybe seven hundred to nine hundred megawatt hour market for two thousand twenty five. Are you speeding the energy transition? Here at the Clean Power Hour, our host Tim Montague bring you the best in solar, batteries, and clean technologies every week. Want to go deeper into decarbonization? We do too. We're here to help you understand and command the commercial, residential, and utility solar, wind, and storage industries. So let's get to it. Together we can speed the energy transition. The Clean Power Hour is brought to you by CPS America, maker of North America's number one three-phase string inverter, with over eight gigawatts shipped in the U.S. The CPS product lineup includes string inverters ranging from 25 kW to 350 kW. Their flagship inverter, the CPS 350 kW, is designed to work with solar plants ranging from 2 MW to 2 GW. CPS is the world's most bankable inverter brand and is America's number one choice for solar plants. Now offering solutions for commercial, utility, ESS, and balance of system requirements. Go to chintpowersystems.com or call 855-584-7168 to find out more. Today on the Clean Power Hour, we're at InterSolar San Diego and I'm with Carlos Abad. He's the head of the Latin American market for CPS America. Welcome to the show, Carlos. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Nice to meet you and, and seeing you in the show. Yeah, for sure. So tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. How did, where are you from originally and how did you get into solar? Yes, so my name is Carlos Abad. I'm originally from Colombia. I'm an architect by trade. Uh, I finished my career around 2008 and uh, there was obviously uh, there was something happening in the market in 2008 for architects and there's not much construction and through my career I always designed it sustainably, conceptually. But uh, when I got out of, uh, when I got into the world and architecture was not such a career at the moment, okay. uh, I turned into sustainability and I started doing photovoltaics. What so year was that that you first started doing solar? That was 2006, 2007. Okay, pretty uh, early. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty early. The first uh, inter interactive inverters came out at that time to, to connect with the utility yep. in, in Miami. And so I needed to do something for like what was going to be my my play because there you know architect with no jobs working in in Best Buy as a receptionist didn't didn't work out. So I did the first farmers market in the city of Doral in Miami and to get the permits I needed to have a way to have uh, electricity, refrigeration and a place to wash your hands. And so I built in the, at FIU, Florida International University, I built a solar trailer that had 250, 250-gallon tanks. Uh, it had a DR2424, 2,400 watts, 24 volts, with lead-acid batteries. <clears throat> I had a 12-volt refrigerator and four lead-acid batteries. When, when I got that... This was a small commercial system or a residential system? No, no, this was in a, in a little trailer that you could move it to different oh, places. Okay. It was for the farmer's market. Gotcha, 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 yeah. All right, so you were designing an off-grid system. I was, it was my first uh, off-grid system conceptually through book. Yeah. Um, and then I got hired by a company in Miami. The owner of this company asked me, it's a cool story. So, so, so he asked me, Hey, now that you did this and you work, would you want to work for me? Uh, his name was James. Uh, uh, his name is John Kimball from Sun Electronics, and I told him, "Yes, you could." Sun hire Electronics. Sun Electronics. Okay, do they still exist? Yeah, they still exist. Oh, right on. So, so I told him, "Yeah, you could hire me if you hire me and four more people." Now, my my wife and three architect friends that came from school. <laughs> okay. And he said yes. Oh wow. Um, 
From there, I went to SEI, took a lot of courses. Uh, Solar Energy International. Solar Energy International. Yeah, in Colorado. I, in Colorado. I went yeah. to Peonia many times. I, I got very educated with them. Um, so you got NAPSEP certified? Yes, I, I am a NAPSEP professionally certified as a professional installer. The PVIP. PVIP. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a I'm, big, also, I'm a big fan of NAPSEP certification. If you're not NAPSEP certified, you want to be. And they have all different kinds. I'm PV Technical Sales. They have design certification, yes. o and all, you know, all flavors. But the PVIP is the most technical generally. I'm also part of their PVA exam uh, committee to, 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 to translate into Spanish for oh, the, for awesome. NAPSEP. So, so yeah, I do recommend NAPSEP. So you're giving Shout back to, to the Sean, community. Everybody at NAPSEP, yeah, much love. Saludos, se les quiere. So fast forward, what year did you start working for CPS? Um, so, so, so wait. Okay. So I went to SEI, uh, studied, and they were opening the Latin American uh, division to, to teach in Spanish the, the, the oh, SEI courses. Sure. So I was one of the first instructors for them that taught in Chile, that taught in Colombia, that taught in Mexico, and, and I became an SEI instructor. Um, what year was that? That was 2011. Wow. So from 2006 to 2007, uh, I, I, I started working on this and then in 2011 I think I became an instructor. And, uh, and, and then we took it from there, then I got my NAPSEP, uh, I worked for Keiko at New Energy, now at Siemens, then went to CPS where I started the Latin Americas uh, at that time, I think that must have been 2017. Um, did it for three years, uh, you know, we, we did really well. Uh, there is an organization already working in this market. Did you relocate to Texas then when you No, I was working? out of Texas. We open offices in Mexico and, okay. and, and, and we structure it. Um, in 2019, I was hired by Tesla. I worked for Tesla for four years, mainly on the large batteries, uh, the mega packs. And then the Tesla solar roof because I have an architectural background. So and you went to CPS walk. and then left CPS. And then, and then came, came back, back to, to run the Latin Americas once again. All right. When so did you yeah. come back? Uh, it's been now three weeks. No way. Yes. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty exciting time, you know. Chint is a very large corporation. It has a lot of products. So it has a full For integration, sure. which is what I like. Yeah. Inverters, batteries. Um, Energy storage. And, you know, in China, they're the GE of China. So they make... Uh, transformers they make substation equipment yes and and if you're doing community scale or larger solar projects you can get the inverter and the transformer as a package so uh, that can be a angle to play in terms of supply chain it can have lower you can have lower lead times for well some that, of those that that's what I'm purchases. that's what I'm betting on right like we have everything in-house and that integration also you know connects with the other faces so you're really dealing with only one company that does the whole thing right we could go as far as as far as we it benefits the end user um, and that's how we see it the clean power hour is brought to you by cps america maker of north america's number one three-phase string inverter with over eight gigawatts shipped in the US. The CPS product lineup includes string inverters ranging from 25 kW to 350 kW. Their flagship inverter, the CPS 350 kW, is designed to work with solar plants ranging from two megawatts to two gigawatts. CPS is the world's most bankable inverter brand and is America's number one choice for solar plants. Now offering solutions for commercial, utility, ESS, and balance of system requirements. Go to chintpowersystems.com or call 855-584-7168 to find out more. Tell us about the Latin American market. We don't hear much about it here in the U.S., right? We're, we're, we have a booming solar market. We're going to do, I think we did 50 gigawatts. The word on the street is we did 50 gigawatts in 2024, up from 40 gigawatts the year before. I don't know what the predictions are or the projections are for 2025, but anyway, we're on a tear. 
what is going on in Latin America? Yeah, La Latin America is a very interesting market. Um, obviously, the head of the solar is the United States because you know that this is where the dollar is produced, and and it, it is such a great economy, right? It's a, it's a beautiful country. Um, Latin America is kind of like beginning bagging a little bit in um, U.S. standards. Um, which makes the cost a little bit higher, but it's also very competitive. So, so call out some markets. What are some markets that are showing growth in solar? Because all markets ebb and flow, as we know. There is a solar coaster on a country-by-country -country basis and on a market-by-market -market basis, and in a larger country like the U.S., it's very regional. But what do you see happening in, in Latin America? Correct. So, so to me, a strategy is very important. And Mexico right now has a precedent that a study in Stanford, I, I believe, for uh, sustainability. Yes. And she wants to push more renewables. So now we're looking for solar production plus energy storage in different programs. You know, they have a centralized energy product, uh, utility in Mexico because it's, 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 a, it, it's a, a state or country owned. Yeah. And so. Um, they, 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 they are pushing renewables and we see maybe like a 7, 8 gigawatt market and uh, maybe 700 to 900 megawatt hour market for 2025. Um, then we're looking at Puerto Rico and mainly focusing for UL standard countries right now because that's the product that we have here. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we also have the IEC version. But we, you know, strategically, what are the product, products that we want to benefit the country we're working on? They all have different standards. They all have different programs. So, so let's talk about the, the, the top 10, and then if you have questions, we can talk about it. So we go Mexico, uh, Puerto Rico, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Panama, Ecuador, Colombia, uh, Peru, Honduras, Guatemala, Salvador. Okay. Yeah, so, so those are kind of like the main focus where we see potential growth, maybe like a 30 to 40 gigawatt in a conglomeration uh, uh, as, as, as a whole. And in the U.S., one of the driving forces, as my listeners know, is, for example, the RPS, the Renewable Portfolio Standard. Does Latin America use Renewable Portfolio Standards or how do they incentivize the adoption of clean energy? Well, you know, in some countries, the high cost of energy, in some other ones, they, they do have regulations where you could work with digitalities and, and create programs that, that could benefit. There's some tax, some tax advantages in, 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 in some, some countries as well. Let's talk so, about Mexico, for example. If I'm a CNI customer in Mexico and I want to reduce my power bill, so I'm looking at renewable energy, is it solar and storage? Are there any incentives for solar and batteries? Is it like an ITC style incentive, a tax incentive? There is there is no ITC incentives. There is higher costs of energy. Yes. Uh, they, 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 um, well, let, let me get back. Maybe there are some tax incentives, but they're not structured as we see them in the United States. Uh, so, so there might be some benefits depending on the location where you are, what are the benefits if you put in batteries, how is that, if, if there is a grid support uh, program. I mean, everybody's piloting different programs with utilities. Yeah. And, and, and Mexico, even though it's not part of the United States, they, they, they have a pretty sophisticated grid, especially in the northern side of Mexico. Um, so, and then you have Cabos, which is not interconnected to the Mexican grid, and then you're running all in microgrids. I didn't I, understand that word you used. Which one? And then we have Los Cabos. Los Cabos, like the the you know, um, going south to That's Mexico. That's a region of Mexico. Yeah, Cabo okay. San Lucas, the the, the, oh. that, the little arm that goes uh, outside of Mexico, which is Mexican. Uh, it's all microgrids. Very wealthy. You're talking California. about Baja. Baja, yeah, Baja California. Okay. Uh, Cabo is Baja California, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my, my, my English <laughs> is not very good looking. Sometimes. Well, yeah, I mean that is the name of the state there. Yeah, it's yeah. Baja California. Baja right? California. You're right. You're right. 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 Okay. Uh, well, it sounds complicated. It's uh, uh, it's a work in progress. Yeah. So Mexico, Puerto Rico. I'm curious. I heard that Puerto Rico is a good solar market. Again, we don't hear a lot about it. We hear more about the bad news that's happening in Puerto Rico, like the grid outage that happened not too far long ago. 
But what are you seeing in Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico is a, a, a very interesting market. Um, you know, they had Hurricane Maria, which is what broke the whole right. uh, utility. Then they had a change. That was what, four years ago now? No, I mean, that was like more like seven now. Yeah. Um, now they, they, they went from PREPA to LUMA, which is the change of utilities and yeah. structures. Uh, they have the BPP programs going on for residential and I guess small commercial. Um, you know, they're rebuilding their grid. Finally, supposedly, now they're getting the, the money that they were supposed to get about seven years ago. So they are rebuilding and, and, and they are, you know, they're, it, it's also a tax haven. So there is a lot of projects that I know, a lot of megawatt hours that are being installed uh, in, in the market. And us with the five megawatt hour block and or the Argonzo, yeah. uh, we could have a pretty good... Uh, so, Way to get yeah, so here, we're standing here in front of the, the whole Chint product lineup from small DG three phase string to large uh, ground mount 1500 volt three phase string, right? Right. What, what in terms of Latin American adoption, what, do you, what are some of the products that you're seeing are more popular? So, I am going to focus on the 250 600 volt, on the 350 800 volt. We're, we're going to do the CNI ESS. And then we're very focused on the power block. Yeah. Because like places like Ecuador, where they they use a lot of hydroelectric and they haven't and, and, and they're not functioning well, they're having a lot of energy cutouts. Uh, something like that will really help them get on their feet and and produce with solar uh, energy. Like now, the combination of solar and energy storage is just like a symbiotic. Uh, yeah, it's the peanut butter and jelly. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's a good Which way I to put it. Which I don't think they eat in Latin America, but <laughs> you tell me. You, 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 you'll be surprised. Really? You'll be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Now we're a, a global, we're all global now. Okay. So what else should our listeners know about the Latin American market? Um, you know, CPS is, is, is focused. Well, my focus with, with the organization in LATAM is, uh, is service focused. Uh, engineering focus. We we make products that will last. I mean, we, there's a lot of experience in the U.S. The Chin Group again is a it's a very large corporation, and we have an integration of a lot of systems. So I think we have the right combination for to to actually make very good, well installed, you know, systems in 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 Latam at a at a good cost, because you know we have to be competitive. Very well. Check out all of our content at cleanpowerhour.com. Please give us a rating and a review on Apple or Spotify. Check out our YouTube channel. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. I love hearing from my listeners on LinkedIn. And with that, I want to thank Carlos Abad of yeah, CPS, yeah. head of Latin American Market. Let's grow solar and storage. How can our listeners find you, Carlos? Uh, you guys can send me an email, carlos.abad at chimpower.com. It's, it's my email. Or you can look me up in LinkedIn, Carlos Abad, um, CPS, or any, any keywords that you guys, LATAM, you want to put in, probably find me right away. Let's grow solar and storage. I'm Tim Montague. Thank you. Thank you. The Clean Power Hour is brought to you by CPS America, maker of North America's number one three-phase string inverter with over 8 gigawatts shipped in the U.S. The CPS product lineup includes string inverters ranging from 25 kW to 350 kW. Their flagship inverter, the CPS 350 kW, is designed to work with solar plants ranging from 2 megawatts to 2 gigawatts. CPS is the world's most bankable inverter brand and is America's number one choice for solar plants. Now offering solutions for commercial, utility, ESS, and balance of system requirements. Go to chintpowersystems.com or call 855-584-7168 to find out more.